I realized that my job is actually to maintain an apartheid system. Very, uh, very early on, I understood that the rights that the Jewish settlers have are not the rights that the Palestinians have. I understood that I cannot touch a Jewish settler if he is attacking a Palestinian. The best I can do is call a local police department to come handle it like I would do at home in Jerusalem. So these Jewish settlers that live in Hebron are living under the same rights that I live in, in Jerusalem, but the Palestinian next to them, next house over, next building over, sometimes next apartment over, lives under my rule, my military rule. And I can do whatever I want with him. I can take his home as a temporary base for a few hours to a few days to a few weeks. I can decide that I'm arresting the people of the house and tying them up to defense of my base. Um, if we will get an order to demolish their home or just lock their front door and don't let them out into the street, their house is on, a street that only Jewish settlers can walk on and Palestinians cannot. So they have to walk through windows to yards into the other side, into the Kasbah of Hebron. I think realizing all of that in a very, very early stage in my service helped me understood that someone was lying to me along the way. I didn't feel like I'm protecting anyone. I didn't feel like I'm helping anyone feeling more safe. I feel like I'm terrorizing people. I feel like for the first time in my life, the boundaries between good and bad that I learned as a kid, and obviously I learned that I'm on the good side, uh, was broken. I felt like I am the terrorist. And my job was literally to scare people so they cannot think about acting against the Israeli settlers or the Israeli military. That was actually our defined mission, to make sure that to instill fear in the hearts of Palestinians in Hebron. And that's exactly what we did.